welcome back to my channel. Welcome to self-love and motivation number four, knowing your self-worth. Okay, so how do we do with last week's challenge, finding at least five positive things for each day of the week? Comment down below and let me know at least five things that were positive that happened to you last week. In order to help you remove the negativity, you've got to find the positives in your life and be able to notice those and validate those a little bit more than you do the negatives. So for me, every day is an ice cream and cake, but it's, it's, it's pretty good. Um, so the five things that I wanted to share with you from last week that I would consider my five, uh, five, my five positives. Let's see, number one, I woke up every day and I count that as a blessing that I'm able to wake up, have breath in my body, get to see my kids continue to grow and flourish, spend time with my husband and make memories with each and every one of them. Um, number two, I'm getting healthier every day. Um, as I've stated in previous videos, I did sustain an injury um, a few months ago and then I was having a lot of other issues going on with my body that needed to be attended to and as the days go by i get better and better i'm not 100 percent where i was before but i'm on my way there and i know i am so i kind of enjoy it that i'm getting healthier every day number three oh i got to do a two-day date night with my husband for our pre-valentine's day we celebrated early um, and we got to go to an amazing restaurant here where we live. It's a Brazilian restaurant that serves like a lot of nice meats and veggies and different things for the taste buds. And I really had a great time. And then on date night number two, we went to a um, comedy improv. Oh my God, it was so much fun just watching them create storylines and do comedy from things that we suggested from the audience. But I had a wonderful time, so that would be positive. Number three. Yes! Positive number four from this week. Both of my girls that are still at home, the younger two, brought in uh, honor roll certificates. They both got distinguished honor roll. I'm so proud of them. So that would be positive number four. And positive number five. I got to spend time with the grandbabies. Aww. My Grandson turned five last week and he had his birthday party so we got to spend time with them there. And then also my youngest granddaughter got to spend Sunday afternoon with my husband and I. So we really got to enjoy time spending time with the grandbaby. So those are my five positives that I, sh I wanted to share with you guys that I was able to find in my week last week. When you know your self-worth and expect nothing less than that, then no one can give you any less than that. We are all kings and queens, princes and princesses for my younger viewers, and we should be treated as such. Don't confuse self-worth with arrogance or cockiness. Those two are separate things. Self-worth means knowing that you are a good person and you deserve to be treated with respect and with love. However, before anyone can give you the love and respect that you think you deserve, you have to first love and respect yourself. For those of you that are in relationships and you find yourself allowing others to mistreat you with words and actions and things of that nature, if you allow yourself to be mistreated by someone, you're failing to love yourself. Becoming aware of your self-worth helps you to know that you can do better, you deserve better, and that better will be on the way. Stop allowing yourself to just settle for what's there. Don't be, don't be afraid of the unknown that comes with stepping out of the comfort of being with someone just because it's easy. Don't worry about being alone. Something and someone better will come along the way when it's time for you to have them. After you've gotten yourself where you need to be mentally, physically, emotionally, spiritually, then that someone special will come along for you. Someone that will treat you like the queen or king that you're supposed to be. Don't worry about having to do it all on your own. Is the size of the house or the beauty of the car more important than your mental, physical, and emotional health? 
I would say it's not. Those are materialistic things. Things that you can get on your own once you position yourself in a place to get them. But your inner beauty, your emotions, your physical health, that's all up to you. Stop allowing others to walk all over you and to mistreat you and do you any kind of way. You are worth more than that. Know your self-worth. Once you change your mindset, how you feel about yourself, and what you allow others to have control of, you will then become confident enough to know your self-worth. For many years, I didn't know my self-worth. I didn't know how, how I truly should be treated, how I should allow someone to do me. I was so focused on making sure that the person that I was with at the time loved me or the version of me that they wanted me to be. I found myself trying to conform to the idea of me that they wanted. I found myself walking on eggshells, not allowing me to just be that expressive, that happy, that energetic me, that lovey, touchy, feely, kissy, huggy person of me. I had all of that bottled up inside of me and I just, I didn't have anyone to really share it with. They verbally said they loved me. They tried to show it through gifts and things of that nature, but that wasn't the language of love that I spoke. I spoke the language of uh, touch and love and affection. I spoke the language of spending quality time, and I wasn't getting that from any of my past relationships. I found myself getting depressed and sad and feeling like I was worthless because I didn't measure up to what they wanted me to be, but then I also wasn't being who I wanted to be. I couldn't be me. That has all changed. I thank God for my husband that he has blessed me with because he allows me to be me. He allows me to be that lovey, touchy, happy, energetic, playful person that I am. The all that that's bottled that was bottled up inside of me, I now get to share that. And it's helping me to grow as a woman. Too many years I've been silent and not been able to actually share and express the love and feelings that I have for people and to help someone because I was fearful of what someone may think of how I said it, or I was fearful of being too much for someone, or yeah. But I had to realize that God made me the way that I am. I'm uniquely and wonderfully made, and so are you. And the way that I am made is the way that I'm supposed to be, and I should not have to conform and change who I am to please someone. They would love me as I am. I'm a continued work in progress, and I thank God daily that I don't look like what I've been through. There are many of us out here suffering in silence, dealing with situations that continue to beat you down and change your mindset of who you are. You lose self-confidence, you lose self-esteem, you lose the value of who you are. I challenge you not to allow that to be you anymore. I challenge you to figure out your self-worth and realize what you are worthy of. Make sure you're giving your best and the person in return should give you their best. It should not be one-sided where you love that person more than they love you. It should be even. You should be giving each other equal love, attention, and affection in the ways that you need to be loved and cared for. Your self-worth is important. Find the confidence in yourself to want to be treated like the king and queen, princes and princesses that you are. Don't settle for anything less than that. Love yourself first, and someone else should love you just as much. Thanks, loves. Be blessed and less stressed. Shanti Speaks.